right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email sent to me from a subscriber that tells his story of truly, truly hands down the worst marriage story I've ever heard about a truly nutcase of a wife. I mean, this takes the cake of anything I've ever heard. And if any of you guys have anything that's worse, send it over to me because I'd like to hear it because this one is the worst, okay? And I chose this guy for this, this story for a number of reasons. The first reason I chose is because, once again, this is going to show you the worst case scenario so far of what I've read about an insane wife just taking advantage of this guy in this situation and just, she's crazy, okay? And giving you the lesson about what happens if you get married and what could happen to you and your life and all that. Uh, the second reason I'm doing it is also to show you how in spite of going through pure hell, which this guy endured for many, many years, you can still end it or walk away from it and start over, you know? Your life isn't set in stone. You can then, even after a bad situation, move on, get a clean slate, second chance, start over, and make something good for yourself, even if you're older and you're later along in life. And the third reason I'm doing this, the main reason actually, is this guy, you find out as his story goes on, as I've heard and read his, because he sent me another email after he sent me this story, this guy... His religious faith is obviously important to him. And obviously what I've pieced together is he stuck with her in spite of all her crazy shit because of that. Now let me make something clear. I don't care what your religion is or what your religious faith is, okay? Because most people in this world, depending on where you are, as I got people follow me all over the world, either believe in or raised in some religious faith of some kind. And my view is this. If that religious faith gives you comfort in life, cool, good. I'm happy for you. It makes you happy, good. If it gives you comfort, good. However, if that same religious faith causes you to suffer because of its rules and its mindset and things, that's the time when it's really, in my opinion, time to start reevaluating the situation. So seriously start asking questions whether this is for me. Because you're going to see here all the shit this guy endures. And I, I believe, based on what I've pieced together here, it's he stuck with it the longest of time, in part because of his religious faith. Because you're married and staying loyal and all that. And the, all the suffering the guy went through. And i got to wonder if he would have done it a second time, now knowing what he knows. So, you know, when sticking to rules and regulations and all that because of religious faith causes you to suffer, that may be, in my opinion, the way I see things, time to bail, okay? Or at least go go your own way, so to speak, in that, that regard. Because at the end of the day, that, that faith, those rules towards different religions, that's somebody else's idea. <clears throat> somebody else's idea how you're supposed to live your life if we're really being honest with ourselves, okay? That may piss some people off. I may get some people freaking out about that. But I'm being honest. I'm going to be real with you guys based on my life experience and what I've experienced personally and what I've observed and, of course, all the stories I hear all the time. So I want you guys to be happy and I want you guys to be held back from the happiness because of somebody else's idea, okay? So let me get into his story here because it's quite a story. <clears throat> Starts off, SSM, first off, I am just turning 60 years old. I am a Scot, but have lived in the States for a long time. In my youth, I was a gym rat, a paratrooper, a black belt, and a boxer. I also have multiple degrees up to PhD. I guess I would have considered myself a prize in the day. Damn right, man. And a badass. Paratrooper, black belt, boxer, gym rat. That's awesome. And there's no reason you can't do any of that stuff aside from being a paratrooper today now that you're getting your life back together. And I'll come back to that at the end. I still work every day, but was pretty much demolished in a car accident two years ago, followed shortly after by a stroke. I've worked a lot on my recovery and even had a laugh yesterday when I was watching your YouTube video about why men shouldn't stop working out. I was riding my stationary bike and doing light curls whilst I listen to your very sage advice and commentary. Now I'm going to ramble a bit because I just need to do that. Don't worry guys, his rambling as he calls it, it's a very good story. So sit back and enjoy the show. He says, I had the worst marriage imaginable. 
I'm married in my mid-twenties, and all personal growth and development stopped the minute I became entangled with what I found out was the spawn of Satan in a pretty package. She turned into a total pig and went from a size 3 to about a 20, and he says, She kept cramming her lard ass into a size 18 clothes that did not come close to covering up the gelatinous mass she became so she did not have to admit going to into the 20s. I had a great income. She spent all of it before the direct deposits cleared the bank. She spent all my savings without mentioning it to me. She even spent all the gift certificates I received once for being the engineer of the year at an aerospace company. I put my money into separate accounts and she took all of it and spent it. I had a savings account for a house down payment with over 20000 in it. She took it all and spent it but could not even tell me what she spent it on. Extra bills, she said. She went to my credit union and took out a signature loans in my name using Ford signatures. All right, so I'm going to stop here for a moment. All this is going on here. I would like to know, and I, and I don't mean to give this guy a hard time because I respect this guy. I can just tell he's cool, been through a lot. Was there any laying down the law with her at this point about spending all the money? And the money's going for this, the money's going for that. I mean needs to be done. And guys, if you're not going to lay down the law with your woman, whether it's your girlfriend, fiance, or wife, she'll keep taking. Okay. Now, does this mean that all women are like this? No. But there are some out there that are absolute nutcases that will take everything they can, take every advantage, milky for everything it's worth. You got to lay down the law. You got to draw the line in the sand. Because look at, listen, what I just went through, all this stuff that was going on, complete bullshit. And what the hell is she doing this whole time? Is she working? Is she earning an income? She's just pissing away all this, guy, this guy's money. And he said here he married in his mid-20s, as most guys do. When you're that age, you you let's be honest here. You I mean you really don't have a whole lot of life experience. Now, everybody's different in terms of what they experienced growing up, their family life, their things that are going on in their society, their country. But generally speaking, still in your 20s, you don't have a whole lot of life experience, and you sure as hell don't know a whole lot about women. So people getting married in their 20s, especially early mid-20s, seems insane to me. You know, like I warn you guys about this all the time, but if you're going to do it, if in spite of all my warnings, all these stories that I do, how things are in, the, in this modern age, how uh, no-fault divorce, how the deck stacked against men, if you're going to do it, guys, even after all that, what I tell you, for God's sakes, at least wait until you're 30 years old. You, not the girl, you as a man. Wait till you get 30. Get a lot of life experience. Do all these things. Become more the man you are and, and, and learn more about nature. I mean, human nature, female nature, and all that. Because by the time you get to 30, you may say, you know what? Maybe I don't want to do this shit. I don't want to suffer like everybody else has. Just a little tip there. Goes on. She went to my credit union and took out signature loans in my name using Ford signatures. She did the same thing to steal all the money out of my retirement account. She applied for any credit card she could get her hands on in my name with Ford signatures. I would pay the bills and she would cancel the checks and take that much, that much money out of the bank to make it look like the payment was received. And I'd like to know, was this... Was this guy aware of a lot of these things immediately, or did he find out later on after a lot of them had been done? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I'm assuming he didn't know right away, but then noticed all the stuff. This would be the time to bail. I mean, it would have been time to bail when it first started, but especially after all this, the mess that she's causing. But like, like you're going to find out, you know, the guy, his religious faith, obviously you don't divorce and stick to the marriage and all that. That's what I've gotten out of this. I could be totally wrong here. He might email me after this video is published and say that wasn't the case, but that's what I get out of this here. So guys, when this type of stuff's going on, you get out. You end it. Okay? You may think, oh, she'll take me to the cleaners and take half my shit. Well, that, half of your shit is better than all your shit. And you can always start over. A man can always start over. A man can be resilient and, and take care of shit and start his whole life over. A, a man doesn't just roll over and die. No, no, no. We're strong here. We're going to, no matter how bad it is, you always get a second chance to start over. So just remember that if your situation is this bad and it gets worse, guys. Goes on. She even hauled all my stuff out in the yard and would sell it whilst I was at work. 
She collected bad habits like people collected stamps or coins. She was a hard drunk and would disappear for days, leaving me with her three kids. And by the way, he says her three kids. These weren't his kids. He was raising her kids to add insult to injury in this situation. She started smoking. She would start fights with me. And so she could rage out of the house and go on a multi-day bender, again leaving me with her kids so that it could be my fault. That's, that's what he says here. She did no housework and loved herself only. Certainly not her children and certainly not me. She would actually stare at herself in the mirror for hours, primping. She was truly the love of her life. She sounds like a total narcissist and sociopath. That's what I think here. And a complete wacko. But you, the guy writing this, this letter, and I'm sure he's well aware of this, by him allowing this, this just, this just enabled her bad behavior. Okay, And she obviously, being a, soci a sociopath and narcissist, saw this guy... You know, the, obviously, he was a good guy in giving, and she can milk it for all it's worth. And I'm sure she understood his religious faith was important to him and what that meant, and therefore, he wasn't going to go anywhere. So it's so important that regardless of whatever your religious faith is and says no divorce or whatever happens to be, if you're in this much misery and this much suffering going on, damn the fucking religion. Get out. <clears throat> These fights we had were a joke. She would rage at me, turn purple, scream with her veins popping out, absolutely insane. I would just sit there, say nothing, and listen to her rant. That enables her behavior. You all, Men don't take shit from anyone. It doesn't mean you have to be abusive, but you know your value, you know your worth, and you stand up for yourself, no matter what. Because bullies, and she is a bully, no ifs, ands, or buts about that, thrive on weakness. But bullies, they cower, they back away from strength. You always have to show strength in life. In any situation, or people will take advantage of you. Always. She would scream something and then say, and this is what you think, blah, blah, blah. I would laugh at her and ask her if she realized she was having this argument by herself. She used to constantly threaten to leave, and I would say, you, don't, you know where the door is, right? My response to her childish threats were, I'd not tied you up here, so no one is making you stay. Man, if she threatened to leave, I'd be like, go. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I should have left in the first year. But I put up with this garbage for 13 years. 13 years, guys. Can you imagine that? All this crazy shit for 13 years? It would be good to say that she just ruined my life and left, but it was a bit worse than that. I should point out that I am a Catholic, and I had certain beliefs that she took advantage of but did not share. In fact, she would not go even, even go to church with me and her children. Well, probably because if this woman would walk into a church, she'd probably burst into flames. This woman truly is the spawn of the devil. Come to think of it, if she stepped inside, her head would probably would have spun off and exploded. Yeah, well, there you go. My life insurance rose up to a value of $1 million. That is when she decided she needed the money more than me. She tried to electrocute me twice while I was rewiring a house in the country that she wanted by turning the breakers on when I was wiring outlets. This is insane. And he stuck with her with this. Good Lord. She zapped me a couple of times. I overlooked that because she told me that she flipped the breaker on because the lights were out somewhere in the house and she needed the lights. She would scream such things at me. However, the room I was working on was a huge dining room that was on its own breaker and there is no way that any other lights were impacted. <clears throat> and he says, parentheses, remember, I am the guy running the wire and I know what is on a breaker. The room was stripped down to bare walls and no floors when she did these things, and there was no way she was using that room. After the second attempt to electrocute me, she stopped. Why didn't you get out, bro? Why? After all this crazy stuff, now she's trying to electrocute you so she can get the life insurance? I don't care what your religious faith is. If someone is doing all this stuff to you, and let alone trying to end your life, out. 
No matter what the cost, you can always start over. <clears throat> and of course, contact the police. The next thing she did was more obvious. She uh, she poisoned me. I should not. I should have seen that coming. She knew I like I like Outback, but I never had any money the whole time I was married to her because she spent it all the time before it was deposited. So when she showed up with my plate of carryout from Outback with my favorite meal, she would have sent up flames and red flags. Anyway, she was a rookie at the kill by by the whole poisoning thing, and she gave me away too much, so I I boked it all up and survived it. Obviously, this is some Scottish words here. Threw it up. She was gonna. She was gone before I had a chance to sort it all out and take action. But I should have had. I should have prosecuted her for attempted murder. But when she left, you know, I was just on cloud nine that she was gone. So finally, after all that, she's out. First, the, for all the crap that he went through financially, all the money she was taking, all the fraud she was committing, all that, leaving the crazy the kids home for him to deal with, and he he sent me an email afterwards saying he never adopted those kids. Thank God. Then, then the whole electrocution thing, then the poison thing. Good Lord, insane. On Christmas Eve, we worked a half day at my job, and when I got home, the entire house was empty. She took everything except a cot, a rifle, and some of my clothing. The neighbors told me that as soon as I left, I left two trucks, showed up, and hauled all the stuff off quickly. In addition to work, I ran a small construction company and did trim cabinetry on site. I had $8,000 worth of equipment, and she stole all of it and sold it. She used to go to my job sites and collect my draw checks and spent that too. I had to tell the builders to never give her my checks, which was embarrassing but necessary. Again, why did this guy put up with this for so long? 13 years. It's not over, guys. There's more. So, she was gone. The surprises were not gone, though. She canceled my payments to the IRS to cover the tax debt she accrued but never paid a dime on. Anyway, I had to get the money together to pay $17,000 to the IRS again. She had taken all the money from all the accounts and mortgaged my land and houses to the hilt. She was a real estate agent and knew the right people to go to, and she was quite comfortable forging my signature to anything and everything. She was a real estate agent, so she made her own money and still did all this. I think her plan was to take off with her piece of shit boyfriend, and he says in parentheses, another real estate agent, for Christmas with about $300,000 of my money. Apparently, that did not work out. Six months later, she was flat broke and sending me emails. The first one asked me if I wanted to meet her for a cup of coffee. I asked her in response, in the last 13 miserable years together, did you ever once see me drink a cup of coffee? Then she started stalking me, following me everywhere and even to another town in another state. She would bang on, all, she would bang on my door at all hours and I would tell her to bugger off before I called the police. You should have called the police. You should have done a hell of a lot of contacting the police and so forth for all the criminal shit she did. But... The past is the past. She would sleep in her car outside the place I was renting. Total freak show she was. I could tell you more, but I will close this up by saying, as a good Catholic, I probably would have never left her. But she left me, and nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to take the faithless, lying, cheating, piece of shit back if she leaves you. Weird as it seems, one of the happiest days of my life was coming home to that empty house. Yeah, after all that, all that went on for all those years, because now the empty house, she's gone. And like I said before, a man can start over. Even after going through absolute pure hell and being stripped of pretty much everything he has, a man can be resourceful, resilient, and start over and build a good life all over again. Okay, That's what I want you guys to do. No matter how bad it gets, guys, there's always another day. Tomorrow's a new day to start over, to make your life better. So if you guys right now are suffering because of a bad marriage or a bad situation in life, it doesn't have to be marriage, or you're in a bad marriage, you can always end it and start over. Even if you're going through hell temporarily, you can start over and have the type of life that you only dream of. Life is short, guys. 
After crawling my way out of that train wreck, I am financially well off and have no concerns. See? I go where I want, I go where I want and do what I want. I have no cares of women anymore. I just think that if I had your advice to hand before I landed myself into that nightmare, my life would have been much better. At least I would have had known what to look for. Well, what happened happened. You can't change the past, but now you know all these things. You went through absolute hell, survived, and now you can have a good life. And the guy said he's 60 years old, and so obviously he's no spring chicken anymore, but still, guess what? And he obviously said he had a car accident and a stroke in the beginning, but he said he's back on the exercise bike, and he's working out because he said he was working out watching some of my videos. And now this guy, and any other guy like that, he now he's now comfortable financially because he's resilient, he's resourceful, and he's strong. Go to the gym regularly. Eat well. Eat healthy. Eat well. Do things that you enjoy. Enjoy your life. And whatever you have fun doing, what makes you happy, spending time with your friends, learning new things, traveling the world, go for it. Do all these things. Enjoy yourself. This guy earned it. And all you guys have the right to enjoy yourself and have a good life. I know depending on where you live, depending on what part of the world you're in, you have less freedom than what we have in the United States. I'm truly grateful every day that I had this freedom over here. And I wish you guys would have that wherever you're living, wherever you're watching this video, because I got people all over the world. Make your life better. <clears throat> he finishes up saying, I've been watching all your YouTube videos with great interest, given my experience combining with your advice. I have to tell you that you are spot on with everything you say. In fact, you have not said one thing that I disagree with based on personal experiences. I only wish I had your advice to guide me when I was young and making every mistake in the book and ignoring every red flag you mention. Well, bro, you're welcome, and this is why I do it, to help young guys, because I made a lot of mistakes when I was younger. And you know what? I'm not perfect. I'll probably make more mistakes as I get older, but I'm trying to learn from my mistakes in the past and learn from others' mistakes, because I, I learn from others just as well as I help teach. So if you're watching this and you can then learn based on this guy's bad experiences and the experiences of others I share in my videos, that's going to make your life so much better. Better, to, again, to learn from somebody else's mistakes and problems than, than have to go through the shit yourself, you know? <clears throat> I was thinking all along that you really ought to write books, one for dating in each part of life from the late teens, the 20s, the 30s, 40s, and 50s. I think in this environment of toxic femininity, you should put it out there that as a survival guide for each age. Who knows? You could do well with it and help a lot of men from falling into these traps. Give it some thoughts. Best regards. Well, I've definitely given it a lot of thought, and I'm seriously considering writing a book, probably getting started on that sometime this coming winter when I won't be working as much, depending if this COVID thing is still going on. I can't do as much personal training because right now I do a lot of personal training outside. But um, regardless, I've thought about it, and I really want to find the right niche because a lot of guys that are in this line of work, that do channels, they write books, so I've got to find my right spot. But I really want to do that and really help guys out all different stages of the way because this is information young guys need. You know, when you're young, you have no idea what to expect. And let's be honest here with regards to marriage, because I talk about that a lot. It's pretty much just a given in most societies and cultures that you're going to get married. And how things are today, young guys don't know what they're in for and what the, the hell they're going to go through. It doesn't mean that every situation is going to be like that, but in varying degrees, a, lo a lot can. In varying degrees, you're going to have forms of unhappiness to crazy shit like this guy's story I just went over. It doesn't mean every situation is going to be like this guy. Okay, let me make that clear. Because there are people that actually are married and happy. It's a small percentage, especially now, but it does happen. So good for them. I wish them all the best. But young guys need to know these things, what they're getting into, because the odds are their parents aren't going to tell them. Their dad's not going to tell them. You know, and, and other people, their, their peers, they want them to be married too, so they can have other people to share in uh, their misery or, or be like them because as the saying goes, misery loves company and birds of a feather flock together. So I've seriously thought about doing it and I really I really think I will do it. I'm just getting the ideas together and see what happens. Life's short. I'm going for it. Who gives a shit? And if I can help people out, awesome. But any, again, anyway, guys, this is the craziest story I ever heard with regards to 
uh, the worst marriage ever heard. But like I said in the beginning, because of this guy's religious faith, he stuck with all this crap. And I respect the fact that the guy, he is a good guy, obviously, and meant well, but look what happened. Okay, so if you are in a situation right now, guys, let's just say a marriage and you're staying in it because you're religious faith, but you live in a part of the world or in a country that, guess what, you can divorce and all that, even if it's against how you were raised, your upbringing, it may piss your family off or against your religious faith. If you're miserable, if, if following these rules by a certain religion is making you unbelievably unhappy, it is time to seriously question that faith, those rules, and start going your own way. Because life is short, and you can wake up one day and look back and say, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I say the hell with this and take a temporary hit for something better later in life? Okay? I want you guys to be happy and these things can hold you back from that. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about this guy's story. I hope to hear from him again. I'm going to email him after this video is over, telling him that I did the video, but it's quite a story. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.